Vanity Fair is known for sensational celebrity coverage, exclusive interviews, and hard-hitting journalism. In honor of its 100th anniversary, the magazine this week released a new book, Bohemians, Bootleggers, Flappers, and Swells, is a collection of the best early articles. It is edited by Graydon Carter, who's led that magazine since 1992. He, he joins oh. us. Oh. 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 How many years? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Well, the long. original editor was there for 22 years, so I just passed him. You just passed 22. I feel good. Here's what's amazing. P.G. Woodhouse, Dorothy Parker, yeah. Robert Benchley, Gertrude Stein, Edna St. Miss Malay, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Noel Coward, Carl Sandburg, Bertrand Rowe, on and on. Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes oh. in the Harlem Renaissance. No, the fact is that the, you know, the Vanity Fair was the sort of modern age smart set magazine. It represented the jazz age better than almost any other publication. We invented modern photography and we've celebrated the photography in a number of other books, but we thought that this would be a way to celebrate the, the great writing that was there during the jazz age. Yeah, back then it was called the Bible for the smartest set. That seems like something you were still doing. Well, we try. We I mean, in 2014. I mean, it's a much bigger, broader magazine for now. Sure. It had 100,000 circulation in those days, and we're over a million now. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, these were when writers okay. were like movie stars. You know, P.G. Woodhouse was a huge, huge force in America back then, and, and writers like, you know, E.E. Uh, e. Cummings and T.S. Eliot, they were big. Yeah. Gail asked me, what's a swell? I know, I just... Please tell her what a swell a is. A swell is somebody, you know, who's, like, uh, well off and dresses up and goes out at night, you know? <laughs> ah, there you, you have a, them, Who you lives know? a swell there, life. Uh, yeah. Who lives a swell yeah. life. So, Are there any swells at the table? <laughs> There's <are> swells, <laughs> you know. <laughs> early morning swells. Yes, yeah. early morning yeah. swells. Yeah. I like it. What do you think Vanity Fair stands for now? <laughs> I mean, it's still, we call it the biography of our age, one month at a time. And it sort of captures a certain um, uh, world for a Catholic reader. It's a global magazine. We have an edition that goes all around the world. And it very much of a, you know, if you have a certain number of interests in a certain field, um, we cover it. And, you, you're both known, though, for your glamour and celebrities, you know, I'm the exclusive party after the, the Oscars, but at the same time for really hard-hitting journalism. Mm -hmm. Both those things can exist together. Well, you know, I think that the fact is that's where a lot of intelligent people's, uh, you know, interests lie. They can talk about Brangelina one moment and Ebola mm -hmm. the next. And, and uh, so it's, here, just here. What, it's what interests us, you mm -hmm. know? Well, 60 Minutes is similar to that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, journalism yeah. plus... Yeah, you know, uh, uh, interesting in, uh, people. Interesting look at interesting people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, what about covers? What sells? Well, these days, not much. I'll be honest. <laughs> really? I mean, the, um, celebrities don't sell the way they used to. It's Greg. not that the, the sort of newsstand business is slightly broken. That's so true. Um, it's an, actually an opportunity to, to test things. And and over the next year, we'll be trying different ways of doing covers that we haven't done before because. That part of the business is broken, but the, the as the magazine shifts to an electronic age. Yeah. So how are you adjusting to a digital age? Well, you can buy the Vanity Fair on any tablet, any phone, um, and we still produce a printed magazine that we'll send to your home, or you can buy it at the newsstand. So it'll it'll take a while. It'll evolve as one area of uh, distribution picks up, the other one will decline. But what's so cool about Vanity Fair, you get some of the biggest stories. Monica Lewinsky's recent article, yeah. you got the very first picture of Surrey Cruz because we all wanted to see her. Jennifer Aniston, well. <laughs> well, I really wanted to almost see. Oh, okay. Yeah, almost okay. Okay. I'll speak for myself. Yeah. I really wanted to see that baby. Okay. Jennifer Aniston after her divorce from Brad Pitt. That is so Charlie Rose. Well, speak for yourself. I did. Jennifer Lawrence after the nude photo hacking scandal. So this is my question. How do you get celebrities that normally don't talk to anybody yeah. to open up? What do you say? What's your Do you call them personally, Graydon? No, I don't. I, don't. Other than to tell uh, Robert Downey Jr., who was on our cover two months ago, I said, look, you just you got to shave. You got to brush your hair and you got to smile. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, and if you we're don't, in business you here. Be yeah, no. And um, <laughs> no, I think that it's uh, we have very good writers who are able to sort of tickle out some inf interesting information from tickle most out. people. Mm. And, uh, and I want to know the tickling space. process, Greg. Well, yeah. I want to yeah. know the tickling <laughs> process. Yes, it's uh, you know fueled by a little bit of alcohol. And, <laughs> and, uh, so it's not first thing in the morning. Yeah. Do many people say no to you? Um, Jeff Fager. 
You know, no. we've asked him a million times no. to be on the cover, and, and he says no. It's CBS. Yeah. Yeah. This is the chairman CBS. of CBS yeah. News. Yeah. yeah. He won't do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Just as well, perhaps. <laughs> how did you decide who was going to be in her? Because this was what was so interesting to me about it. It's, it was like a time capsule of the time. You've got a great article from 1915 yeah. about women earning fifty thousand dollars. Like, wow, that's yeah. so much and money for the guys, time. You know, for the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what yes. happened with Gwyneth yeah. Paltrow? Oh, Lord. I mean, that's just such a, I, you know, we had a story. We we're doing a little essay on why women didn't like her and why women, some women did like her. And then it became this sort of um, viral thing on the Internet about that this was some big takedown. But, you know, she's a nice woman. She's, you know, doing her best. Would she but be you were covered? Kim Jong-un sure. couldn't have <laughs> issued a more blanket be... demand. For well, people. she'd sent us some widespread email saying, nobody ever talked to Vanity Fair again. They're out to get me. And, and. We weren't, and and um, I would save my my cannon fodder for bigger game than than, than Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> Kim Jong Un, really? and, yeah. you know, yeah. presidents and like whatnot. cannon fodder yeah. for cannon bigger, bigger game. game. Uh, There's uh, your quote of the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that, yeah. Graydon Carter. And, 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 and who might that be? <laughs> um, Kim Jong Un, you know. I like that, Graydon Carter. Would you guarantee him, him the cover? <laughs> no, he's okay. like Jeff Hager. <laughs> Graydon Carter, you swell. First time you. Jeff Fager so and Kim Young Un have ever been in the same sentence. No, it's probably true. <laughs> Thank you, Graydon. Thank you. Bohemians, bootleggers, flappers, and swells Bills. like Graydon Carter is on sale. Out at night, every night. <laughs> <laughs>